The significant, or let us say the major part of the history of modern Russia is copied and rewritten from the history of Ukraine and its medieval predecessor, Rus. Ukraine is the only direct descendant of the most powerful medieval state in Europe, Rus. Its capital was located in Kyiv, like the current capital of Ukraine. The history of Kyiv itself is more than 1,500 years old. From the 9th to the 13th century, Rus was a kingdom with its unchanged capital located in Kyiv. That medieval empire stretched from the Black Sea to the Gulf of Finland and Lake Ladoga. From the 13th to the end of the 14th century, the kingdom of Rus was situated mainly in the western part of modern Ukraine. The name of Rusin lands in the western region was preserved until the end of the 18th century being also part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Rus and Zamatia, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The title King of Rus was used until 1918 when the Austria-Hungarian monarchs ruled the kingdom. According to the documents, the last King of Rus was Charles I of Austria, the Emperor of Austria-Hungary. Each region of Rus had its own name, such as Red Rus, White Rus, Black Rus, the central part of Rus was called Ukraine. That's documented on the Western Traveler's and Cartographer's maps since the 12th century. Besides their own tribal names, the inhabitants were called Rusi or Rushin. Such names are still common for people who live in Ukrainian Carpathians and national minorities in Slovakia, Serbia, and Croatia. Medieval Rus was actively trading with each largest country of that time and the most powerful empire on the European continent, Byzantium, the state where Rusi, in alliance with the Scandinavian Vikings, made incursions into from time to time. Rus also traded with the states of the Franks, Germans, and other nations. Kievian and Russian kings were actively building connections with the rulers and noblemen of other states. In such a way, they took part in the creation of a huge European dynasty of monarchs who's ruled various European countries to this day. The whole grand history of modern Ukrainians' ancestry was stolen by Moscovia, nowadays known as Russia. Such country like Russia, located on the outskirts of the great Rusin state between marshes and forests, far from the civilization and trade routes inhabited by underdeveloped barbaric tribes of slaves, cannot have such a history, of course. These poor lands controlled by Kyiv have never been of a great importance to Rus. The Moscow Kingdom was created as an Ulus, a settlement of the Golden Horde in 1277, being a territory under the control of the huge Asian Empire formed by Genghis Khan and his dynasty on the invaded outskirts of northeastern Rus. The center of the kingdom was located in Moscow, a new town founded by one of the local kings, Yuri Dovgoriki, the son of Volodymyr Monomak. Khans of the Golden Horde and their protégés ruled in Moscovia for several centuries until the empire's dissolution happened in the beginning of the 16th century. After that, the former Ulus was renamed as the Moscovite Tsardom that started active invasions and expansion of the territory. Approximately at that time, the idea of the succession of Rus and even the Byzantine throne was born there. After the decline of the direct Genghis family, the Romanov Kabylin dynasty took over Moscovia at the beginning of the 17th century an oath of loyalty to the traditions of the Mongol dynasty were taken. From the 13th to 17th century, Moscovia was marked on European maps as Moscow Tartary, or Tartaria, and as part of the Great Tartary, but never as Rus. The Muscovite Tsardom was named the Russian Empire, or simply Russia, in 1721. There and then, the Tsar of Moscovia, Peter I, simply copied the ancient name of the Ukrainian lands the name used in ancient documents and medieval maps. The very name Russia is a transcription of Rus in Greek. This is how almost all the lands of former Rus, modern Ukraine, were documented. The self-proclaimed Emperor Peter did not hesitate to steal the name of a powerful European state known for centuries on the territory of modern Ukraine. He did not go into the details of history either. The thing is that in the Middle Ages, before Ukraine was conquered, Moscow could not take or steal the name Rus as everyone was aware of Rus being Ukraine and the location of the territories. Long before Peter became the emperor, the Moscovites, with the help of some European historians, 
had started to rewrite the history of Moscovia in their own way, taking over all the achievements and the history of Rus, Ukraine. Nowadays, they still continue doing it. They were not ashamed at all to add the laurels of the Byzantine Empire to their list of achievements. It's obvious now why Moscovia became an empire, and Peter called himself not just an emperor, but an emperor of Rus. At the end of the 18th century, the so-called Norman theory was written by the German historians at the Russian court. That was the theory of the name Rus origin, as if the Varangians occupied the land of Ukraine, called them Rus, and began to rule in Kiev. Though this is a complete nonsense and contradicts the real history, the name Rus dates back to the 4th century CE, the territory of Dnepro, Ukraine. Later, in the 10th and 11th centuries, Normans or Varangians served as hired soldiers and the troops of the Kiev kings and their future Koning studied and served at the court of Voldemir the Great and at the libraries of Yaroslav the Wise. In total, at least three Scandinavian kings studied in Kiev in the 10th and 11th centuries. These are Olaf I, Olaf II, and Magnus the Good. In the times of early Rus, firstly the Scandinavians joined the Russians in the military expeditions and trades with Byzantium, then as mercenaries in the armies of the Byzantine emperors, where they almost completely replaced the Rus and warriors as a result of the Appanage Wars. The difference between Scandinavians and Rusans was invisible in Byzantium. They both were called Normans, people from north. The outstanding Ukrainian historian Mikhailo Rashevsky describes this in detail. We recommend to familiarize yourself with his works. This is the first episode in a series of What Russia Has Stolen. The following videos will be even more interesting. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, click the like button, and subscribe to our channel.